So before we start off, I'm just going to say that this is a fairest fan art <laughs> remade by JR, and this is for entertainment purposes only, considering my YouTube is not monetized. So, so it's a V2 bottle. Some of you are probably thinking, oh my god, it was only a matter of time before we saw you in a VTube model, or oh my god, not another VTuber we don't see those on YouTube. But um, I thought I'd take the opportunity to to use a VTube model, not only because it helps me step outside the comfort of being myself. Um, the fact of the matter is, you know, I don't like myself and I don't like my appearance. And I think that part of that is, you know, it's part of, part of that comes from the skin issues I deal with. Things like eczema, I'm really having a, a struggle with eczema right now. And I think a part of it also comes from, I, I just don't like the way my body looks and it, like, there's some things that you just can't change. And unless you're in virtual reality or a virtual space. And I think to me, for, for me to really lean into, I guess, this virtual space, this virtual reality, I've always wanted to try VR, by the way. Um, yeah, VTubing is a good way to start because I really believe in technology and power to change the world. Um, I don't know if it'll ever get to the point, point to where I want it to get to in life, um, but it's, it's good to hold that belief there, yes. A fun fact for all my laid-back OGs, I actually VTubed on Twitch a long time ago. Um, I didn't I didn't really get much success. I, I really don't think I have the personality for, for VTubing, um, but hopefully it will allow me to, like I said, step outside of my comfort zone. Be someone else. As you know, I made it a goal for this year to be 2024, a year of progress, and, well... It hasn't been terrible. It hasn't been great. I haven't really kept up with my goal of doing one video upload per week on this channel. But I have been doing things across the numerous channels, and I've been blogging a lot. And I find that I'm actually much better at writing. I'm not very good at video, hence the VTubing. Um, not very good at actually speaking and talking in a coherent, attention-grabbing way. So a lot of my videos are just rants. Um, but... Maybe that's why you're here. Maybe you, you like the rawness of my videos. I try not to script them. Not because I can't script them. I'm actually quite an adept writer, I think. Um, but just because I like to be authentic and pure through the, the lens of a VTuber. If that makes any sense now. Um, yeah, but I thought this VTube model would be appropriate because I, I like to, to do makeup and dress up and cosplay. And this is actually one of my favorite outfits to wear. Uh, it holds a deep place in my heart. It's actually from a show called Rizu, and it's actually a male character who wears these kind of things. So um, for me, who was unfortunately <laughs> assigned male at birth, um, you know, I rolled that D&D uh, &D role that you can't really control, and I'm a guy. So um, for me, who who is a guy, and um, this character wears these kind of clothes, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice and freeing, I guess. Anyway, I thought it'd be a fun idea to do this podcast through the lens of the VTuber. I, I think this podcast originally started as, you know, a life strategy guide, but I really don't know what I'm doing in life, even though I'm almost 30. <laughs> even though I'm almost 30, I feel, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, and um, it's, it's scary. <laughs> life is still scary, and I have no idea what's going on. It's supposed to be sort of this kind of tool to how to reach success because I, I'm trying to document everything I'm doing to get to where what I get to in life and um, honestly it's not going that great but I, I read a lot of stuff online about learning in public so I'm actually trying to learn in public um, and hopefully you know I'll be able to look back at this years from now and say you know I, I accomplished everything I accomplished because of this. So I thought it'd be a good idea to just kind of go through my my blog, which has kind of turned into my out, out, living out loud diary, sort of diary gay, I know, um, diary about what happens um, on, on the day-to-day -day basis. And not everything is completely accurate or, um, well, I, I would say not, it's, it's pretty accurate, I would say. Um, but I tend to fluff things up and there, there might be some, obviously because I'm a, a human and I'm flawed, I'm not a cyborg person yet. <laughs> the um, the blog post might paint me in a better light than I actually am, um, because that's just. <laughs> but from from what people tell me is I'm pretty self-aware um, most of the time, overly self-aware at times. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just going to walk you through my life and what I've been trying to, to get through and, and my struggles. Um, so we're going to start right before the blog post um, of my last podcast episode, I guess. So here we have a picture of my car. Um, and this car is here for a reason. Um, I, I said insanely remarkable, remarkable things you learn navigating life's mountains. And I, I try to be a little poetic and storify and make make sense and meaning of my life struggles because everyone goes through them. And sometimes it's how you phrase them or how you put them into perspective, um, how, how it shapes you and defines your life. Um, so there's there's actually a Buddhist temple at the top of this mountain. And I have a collection of spiritual views. Um, I was raised Christian, but I, I don't adhere main, I don't adhere to just those Christian beliefs. I, I, I like to find the good in every religion. And, and the one that really spoke to me was Zen Buddhism because of beatnik philosophers like Alan Watts and Terence McKenna and all, all those, all those good people that I need to actually study the theology behind, but you know, no one reads nowadays. Um, sometimes I read, <laughs> um, Reading is one of the things I'm trying to do on a daily basis to make my life better because books, knowledge, yes, mean. <laughs> but yeah, this, this car represents a turning point in my life, actually, because I bought this car with the intention of <laughs> buying and selling cars um, and, and exporting them overseas. And it turns out I'm not actually good at that because I, I, I grow a spirit, not a spiritual, spiritual makes it. I grow a fond attachment to, to things like cars. And also what happened was I bought this car and I drove it on the mountains and I blew its engine. Before before the engine blew, I did get to experience it. You know, I drove it around the winter, got to do some fun stuff with that. Um, but um, what what happens was I blew the engine in this car when what was supposed to be invent an investment turned into a financial money pit. <laughs> so I still haven't fixed this car. Um, and I wanted to beat myself up about that, um, making mistakes. But what I realized is you can learn a lot of things because you've made mis mistakes, right? Um, so I'm not going to lie, moving to Japan has been one of the, the hardest things I've ever done in my life. It's, it's still a struggle every day. Um, and one of the things uh, I talk about in my last video is just the financial struggle of living in Japan, because realistically, working wages kind of suck here. And the, the working wages hasn't, the cost of living is a little cheaper, but th there's a, all these hidden costs that come with living in Japan, including the move-in costs and all these taxes and, and residents. It's, it's so financially difficult living here. And on top of that, your money is worth literally less. Um, so what I decided to do for myself is to start financial tracking. Um, and although everyone says that Japan is a cash-based society, it mostly is a cash-based society, but you can use your debit card in a lot of places in Tokyo and the major metropolitan areas. So I've actually been using my, my debit card and I linked it to a phone, my phone. I'm not sure how safe that is. Um, but it turns out I can actually track my finances better when I use a digital medium. And this allows me to maybe at the end of the week, just go to my, my US bank account and, and look at all my financial purchases and put it in a Google sheet. And hopefully this will make it easier to do taxes and I'll get a better tax return next year. But I literally just go through all my, my purchases and put them into categories. And I think for right now, because my financial literacy is so bad. Um, just tracking it is a, before I, I decide how to budget things and optimize things, just tracking it is a habit I'm getting into. Um, and th this is for a reason, right? Uh, I'm doing this because I, I want to invest in racing, digital media equipment, maybe getting my own VTuber model, um, things like that. Um, and I, what I'm finding is money buys you freedom to pursue things. I, I'm not a materialistic person at all. Um, if you look at the majority of my expenses last year, it was actually traveling and, and moving expenses, um, taxes, and, and just all these boring things. <laughs> the one nice thing I bought for myself in years has been my, my GPU. 
which um you know i use it to play apex and i also use my gpu to make money i've used it to edit videos and do twitch streams and i i realized not not everyone will make bad final financial decisions in, in their life but if you realize you're making bad financial decisions you can start to rectify it right um and maybe that will make you better with your finances down the line um i think money is one of those things that have never really been talked about in my house i, I don't think a lot of asian or black parents are good at talking to their kids about finances and money kind of a hush hush we don't talk about this in our house um, the 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 exposure i got to financial literacy was just seeing my mom stress out about her checkbook and balance her checkbook in the car um and that's one of those things where my mom probably didn't realize uh, we we could pick up on her stress as she looked at, at the balancing the finances um but yeah it's one of those things where you my, my my dad was working a lot of overtime my mom was balancing two jobs and um really my, my older sister was in charge of raising us and I, I don't want to get into that now but just because you've made one ba bad decision financially doesn't mean it's downhill for the rest of your life and I, I think that's where I'm trying to get at here um <laughs> so this, I'm just describing how fun this car is. Um, I, I love my Evo 4. Um, if I ever did fix it, I'd want to make it look like a Mitsubishi Zero Fighter, like a wide body, a white one, um, with with all the the fun. like To make it look like a Zero Fighter livery with maybe a little inspiration from Evangelion. Uh, something like that would be pretty cool, I think. But yeah, I, I took it through the snow. I, I drifted it. And here's where I actually talk about, this is the first time I really reflected on my near-death experience. Um, I've had a couple near-death experiences in, in life. One was in a hospital as I was very young. And the other one was driving this car on a mountain in, in, in the Japanese mountains acting like a rally driver. Um, so I ended up driving up the mountain <laughs> and having a blast. And then I drove down the mountain and it was pretty scary. Yeah, so it was pretty scary driving down the mountain. And when they talk about the downhill in Intro D, that it's it's really no joke. A lot of the close calls I've had on the Toge um, are driving downhill. Um, well, when you're driving uphill, you have the power of gravity, and you're kind of biting into the curb on downhill. You're you're kind of falling off the road. Um, so what what happened was I, I I drove up this mountain. I got really cocky driving up. I was like drifting around around the hairpins and feeling comfortable. You, you start to feel yourself as a driver and you find that limit. And there's a couple of times on these snow roads where I, I found the limit and I, I went over it. And um, it happened. I remember driving up to just flooring it downhill. Okay, I was like, okay, I got to 100 kilometers, 110, 130. And I saw the hairpin coming up. So I slammed on the brakes. And you hear that you hear that ABS going off. And the hairpin just kept getting closer and the car wasn't slowing down. Um despite the ABS, the car wasn't slowing down at at a rate where the car slowed down at a rate where I'd probably still hit the guardrail and at the other the side of the guardrail is just the the abyss. Um but this is one of those things where it's like I sometimes I I don't believe in God I I, I go back and forth on whether this th there's a God or not or I, I believe there's you know a, a greater spiritual force in the universe out there I don't know I, I hate calling it God because it's such a polarizing word maybe whatever whatever it is I think it saved me that day uh, because right at the bottom of the hairpin there was just patch of gripe dry pavement because it was um toward a, towards the end of winter and the beginning of early spring um and my car slowed down enough to where i could make the turn and uh that's when i realized oh damn i could have could have died there um and, and when you go through something like that i think you kind of brush it off and you don't think well that's how i reacted to it. i brushed it off i didn't tell anybody it for about it for a long time because I feel like when people tell these stories, 
a lot of people will bullshit and it won't be a real story. But this is a very real story. <laughs> I, I I don't. Um, it's it's not to brag. Um, actually, like I feel like a lot of people will tell these unbelievable stories and you can kind of tell their bullshit. Um, yeah, this is a, a very real story. I just remember I drove to the Lawsons on the way home and I just sat in the sat in the I got I grabbed some snacks and some drinks and I just sat in the car for uh, a good hour or um because I just didn't know how to react to that. So, it's one of those things where after you go through something like that, you should start to value every day, but you for, you forget, right? You, you start to value all these boring things after it's kind of like um when you have earwax in your ear and you can't hear for a bit you value your hearing more after but um, it's kind of like that every everything just seems kind of great um so um this just pretty much describes how how i view just driving at nighttime and sure it's it's dangerous but it's it's like a it's like a fun rush that <laughs> it's hard to find anywhere else and like it's one of those things where I'd I'd like to be a, a racing driver and do it re in real life, but realistically, <laughs> although like I feel like my my family is to toxically positive at times because they always tell you, "Oh, believe in your dreams will come true." But realistically, I know um, if I wanted to be a competitive racing driver, it's too late for me. Um, that's just uh, realistic, Marco speaking, um, because the the reality is. A lot of unless you know they come up with the AI cat girl uh, cyborg body that I want right now. <laughs> but uh, the the reality is I'm I'm 30 and almost 30. We'll be turning 30 at the end of the year. And a lot of these kids um, in professional racing start when they're five. You know, it's it's just uh, it, won't, it won't happen in this lifetime. Maybe maybe in the next life if that's a thing. Um, but yeah, so these are some lessons I was trying to learn from that experience retroactively. So trying to be thankful. Um, find the limits of grit before doing anything dumb. Um, they, they tell you that in when you're trying to learn, learn racing in a real car, you have to find the limits pretty quick. Because unlike sim racing where you can kind of build up to that limit, over over hundreds of races, you, your time in a real car is limited. Um, so this this is one of the things I need to learn to correct. Um, because I blew the engine. Um, this is one of the useful skills I can learn. Um, because I I really know nothing about mechanics. Pretty dumb when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, if someone shows me how to do a process, I could probably do it again. But um. Mechanics and, and the way parts work, it just doesn't make sense to my brain. Um, unless it's like explained from the I like my I think I've talked about this before, but my brain is one of those brains where if I don't understand something fully, I feel like I don't understand it. Learn to save again. So actually, before before I bought that Evo, I was scrimping my money and I was actually. Um, saving quite a bit. Um, I wouldn't go out. Uh, you know, I'd buy buy things at the grocery stores. One of the things when that engine blew, um, it it had been through after a time where I I lost my job and I got a another job where I was only taking nine hundred dollars a month home. Um, when that engine engine blew, um, it just destroyed all my hope and I I just stopped saving because I was I thought what's the point like um. This this thing with that was supposed to bring me in money just ended up being a financial black hole. Um, this is just an example of an expense and income cheat. Um, and, and there's a template of it on my blog if you if you want to. It's just a Google the standard Google one. So this is my to do list that I'm trying to get through. What I realize is I need to come up with better processes like when I upload a YouTube video. Um, when I do art, um, just so to make checklists for myself, so I just do it all. Um, so that's one of the posts I made. Let's go on to the next one. Um, so I doubt myself a lot, and I, I think a, a lot of creative people do. Um, 
think a, a, a lot of introspective people do. So I'm going towards this dream of building laid back lifestyle, um, building my JDM video channel and, and my music and all this stuff that I do. Um, and sometimes it feels like I'm just like obviously in over my head because that's that's one of the things I have. But I'm just it's not it's not delayed gratification. It's like more delusion on my end um, because realistically, if I've been doing something for this song and nothing's paying off, then um, I just you know I just don't have the chops or the talent or or, or something. Um, so I actually. My my mom and I had a call, and I still haven't called her since. We kind of we had we had a fight over over the phone, um, and this is one of the the hard things about um, human relationships. And human relationships is something I just don't understand. Um, obviously, talking behind the the guise of a VTuber, I'm not very good at talking to real people, but. Uh, in my quest to be a content creator, I've just never felt like I'm doing enough, and I, I never felt like I, I'm. I just never feel like I'm enough, um, and I think that's. It's not only a symptom of being um, raised as you know an African American Asian child <laughs> in in the Western American Western Hemisphere of America. What's good, like the West Coast of America. Um, both my parents um, had had given me the impression that nothing I do is ever enough. Nothing I, ever, ever I do is, is good enough. And I think I've just carried that with me into a, adult life. Um, it's because I, I do realistically, I do work very like I, I know it's called laid back lifestyle. Um, and it doesn't seem like I upload a lot, um, but I, I do a lot um, on my, my, in my, my spare time. I fill my spare time with, you know, getting better at music and and in in games and and art, and it just never feels like enough. And it's hard to never feel like you're enough. Um, um, I think that's one of the the reasons why I like Into the Spider Verse. It's one of my favorite uh, animated films because Miles also has that same feeling as a character. Um, He's got to fill these these shoes of Spider-Man, right? This this hero that we all look up to, and he can't do it like Spider-Man. Um, and I think this is one of the reasons why I like why I like fictional stories, and I love the world of fiction, and I hate reality because Miles' story has a happy ending. You know, he learns to use his fire powers, uh, he takes a leap of faith, and and then he swings, and he, and he's successful. Um, well. I, I don't know how my story was. Not everyone's story ends so. Not, not everyone's life is like a storybook, and I think we get the Disneyfication of re reality, where you think it's gonna work out, and and everyone tells you it's gonna. And it's, it's. A, I love my family, but I it it almost feels toxically positive when they're like, oh, everything will work out, because not everything does. It's just the way reality works. Um, And this this isn't something I struggle with alone. Um, my my friend that I met in Japan, um, he's a British guy. He he carries the same sentiment with him, right? Um, that he's never enough. He makes over you know a hundred thousand dollars a year doing a tech job. Um, he drives really cool cars, you know, all cars that he wanted his whole life, and he still never feels like he's good enough. And I think it's easy for me to kind of dip down into that um, not feeling good enough. Um, and, and I know I, it started this year off positively. And, and I think some of this is burnout because, you know, a lot of these articles take a lot of work to, 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 to put together because I'm not doing it with AI. This is, this is my real writing. This is my emotion. This is my brain thinks and whether that's valuable or not i don't know probably not probably not considering the view count on it right that's how we determine value nowadays um so this just 
talks about how the call with my mom went. Um, she does this thing where she she spam calls and she doesn't respect boundaries. Um, and sometimes you need you need to be like, yeah, I just can't I can't call right now. But she'll just keep spam calling, which um, I don't know if she does it to like press buttons or or, or what. But it's like, can't we wait till this weekend or um, something that's reasonable to ask because as you grow up your relationship with your parents change right and i i'm still struggling to find that too and i, I think i i one in one of my most popular videos the one where i'm talking about hey i'm struggling with this whole gender presentation thing i'm struggling to live for myself and i still find that um it's even though that you like the older i get the more i realize your your parents are people just like you. They're just as flawed as you. But I think it's easy to hold them to no, no. My parents know everything, right? They they've always known everything. They've shown me the way. And I think the world changes, but not everyone's thinking changes at the same time. And it, it's not. I'm not trying to say that my parents are stuck at a certain time period, but I think everyone's kind of stuck at a certain time period. For me, for instance, I can't ad adopt to the short form video content. You know, that's just not something that my my brain likes or is attracted to. I think it's uh, I don't know. Maybe I just don't know how to have fun. <laughs> yeah, maybe I just don't know how to have fun. But yeah, essentially, she called me, um, and she saw that my skin. Oh, that's another reason I'm poor. Actually, is. Um, Medical care is quite expensive, and I'm not a very healthy person. Now, I try to exercise and I try to eat healthily, but I, I have a skin condition called eczema, and it's been with me my entire life, and it's only gotten worse as I got, I've gotten older, sadly. And I don't know why eczema is a feature in the game of life. It's like a debuff, permanent debuff. <laughs> well, got another unlucky roll on the dice there um but yeah my skin was flaring when i called her and i told her i had stopped taking these pills because these pills are really expensive i have one left um i'm actually running out of medication and i haven't gotten my insurance card yet she'd probably be angry about that but 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 it's frustrating to have eczema and and spend all this money on it and not have the medications work like they're supposed to i've had side effects from some um, some aren't as effective as I'd like for paying so much money. But she got uh, upset about that, and then we got heated. And then we were just kind of um, throwing shots back and forth. And and eventually, what what, what started out as tur trading shots um, ended up being a one-sided battle of putting down myself because I, because I have struggles with self-doubt too um i started saying mean stuff about myself more than my mom was well she wasn't saying mean stuff but you know how you kind of argue with your parents um and it, and it turned into me just beating up on myself and um this kind of made me reflect on why i was beating up on myself and i had been unemployed for seven months um I think I've talked about this story before, but yeah, I walked away from my last job because there was inequality that I couldn't stand for, and um, I pointed it out, and, I, and I, no, the senior management didn't want to address the issue, so I said, okay, I think I've been doing lots of good work, um, and you're not going to give me a raise, and um, well, there's a lot of inequality here, and I can't stand for that, so I'm, I'm going to have to leave. Um, and that was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made in, in my life. Um, and it's easy to sit on the other side of it now and be like, rah, rah, I did it. I stand for my beliefs or whatever. But back then it was so uncertain. Yeah, I hate myself. <laughs> I'm a loser. Everything I touch fails. Nothing you do is enough. You'll never be enough, and and that's that's something that that's always in the back of my mind. Um, and and here, to kind of lighten things up, 
a little bit after such a heavy statement to write and have people read. Um, I talk about a childhood story of my dad caught this this little snake in a, in this metal bucket. I still remember. <laughs> it's, like, it's a funny story, actually. Uh, my dad caught this little snake in this bucket. And um, he said to be careful and stop messing with it. But of course, I, I have to learn things the hard way. It's just the way my brain works, apparently. I kept putting my hand in the bucket and then pulling, pulling my hand away as the snake went to bite it. But eventually, the snake bit my hand, and I panicked, and it was just like holding on to my hand. And I was like shaking my hand in the air, and the snake was still biting it. Um, but yeah, the modern sayings fuck around found out. I fi found out that snake bit my finger and or my thumb, and it it latched on while I was swinging it around. Eventually, my dad came by and like got me to calm down. And as soon as I calmed down and stopped swinging my hand, um, my dad, you know, kind of grabbed the snake behind its head and the snake calmed down a little bit and stopped biting me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is one of those things where I say humans have a snake brain too. And this is just, uh, I, I do a lot of watching a video. I, I know Jordan Peterson's kind of a controversial topic but um i think i when i grew up i had the idea of my mom being you know the very nice person and not to say my my mom's a mean person but she's flawed as well and i think um i always thought of her as a nice person but she can be quite mean too um and everyone can be quite mean i can be quite mean um it's just human beings that's the way we are and you know, typically we're we're meanest to the people that we love the most because they we know that they'll still love us, which is awful. Um, we're also the nicest to those same people, so we get the the emotional extremes, right? Um, but I th I think I was hearing about my mom in in high school, and she wasn't a nice person, and and I don't think I would have enjoyed being like if I had gone to the same high school as my mom, I don't think I would have liked her. Um. um not only was she mean to the other students, but she was mean to others. And it was, she was pretty much like the, the mean girls Filipino Catholic edition <laughs> right there. Um, but, and this could just be anecdotal evidence, but I think some of the meanest things I've ever heard someone say have come from a female. And, and, this this might sound sexist, but it's just it's just the way that men and w women work. Um, we are different, and and I think it's well documented that for antisocial behavior, disproportionately women will use verbal aggression as opposed to men because men will just hit each other or something, you know, or fight. Um, so everyone has to express their their aggression in some way, whether that be art, with your words, um, with your body posturing, and I've, I've seen my, my, my mom use some cutting words against my dad, um, in the way that she talks about, uh, like, I think I said to my mom that she always thinks she's better than other, other people. Um, and, and it, it's not even what she says all the time. And sometimes it's, it's the way that she acts. Um, and she, she sent some mean things to my dad and his side of the family. And sometimes that's deserved because my dad um like I said, well, we're all we're all people i'm not the perfect person either but you know <laughs> you know he'd be fooling around or um not coming home for a while so yeah <laughs> sometimes people need to hear some some uh some <laughs> mean words when they when they mess up right uh, people need to be held accountable for their actions um but sometimes you know my mom would just say say something to my dad to just deflate him and I would see it deflate him. I mean, he would just like sit in his car and after coming home and not want to be inside the house. And now that I'm older, I kind of understand that. Not only do you have your like bratty son, because I was not a good person. Uh, I was I was pretty much a spoiled brat. I didn't know what I had. Um, but not only do you have to deal with your spoiled ass kids, uh, you have to deal with your wife who says cutting shit to you when you go home. It's like no one wants to deal with that. I'd rather just sit in the car and listen to the radio. Right. Um, I mean, I do that <laughs> and I don't even 
<laughs> I don't even have a family to drive. Like sometimes when I, I come home and I drive home from somewhere, I know my house is dirty or something. I don't want to deal with it. So I just sit in the car and sit on my smartphone, you know, it's, maybe it's learned behavior from my dad. But um, this is where I, I, I highlight the different depths of cuts. Um, so my, my dad has, has some, some mean things. The, the one thing I've realized about my dad is what he says and w what he does are com two completely different things. And um, it's, it's kind of like a, a small dog barking or um, because my dad looks a little bit like Denzel Washington, I, I equated it to Alonzo's speech in Training Day um, because that that speech, although it's a, a, a memorable part of a film, is is one of desperation and, and and losing control, and that's that's a lot of what my dad's rants were. They were just empty, hollow, hollow, kind of threats and, and promises. I, I think the lighthearted way to describe it is, if we asked my my dad to stop at mcdonald's on the way home he'd say no or maybe and that usually meant maybe maybe was yes and no was no was a maybe um but if we asked my mom the same question no meant no <laughs> and yes meant yes so sometimes my my mom would say things that just disembowels people it's very harmful things and she'll, she'll do it to I don't know if she does it knowingly. Um, and maybe I do that too sometimes, you know. Um, yeah, because I did say some pretty mean things. I don't want to be like, oh, my mom said mean things to me. And my dad. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand this as, uh, you know, someone with, with high-functioning autism. I, I probably said a lot of mean things in that conversation as well. But yeah, realist, that was really the first time my mom said something that kind of cut me she told me I, I i didn't work hard enough and um but i told her i like i work my ass off like i work my ass off on so in so many different areas of life um you know i was working on this power automation system <laughs> making stupid blogs that no one reads and, and trying to piece together a digital content creator career it's just not happening, uh, realistic. <laughs> and then, uh, right when I was feeling down, that's when my mom, like, just, you know, right to the throat. Um, none of these things make any money. You're putting off your effort towards the wrong things. And, yeah, some of that I, I agree with, you know. <laughs> Wanting to get Diamond and Apex is... doesn't do anything for your life, you know, being good at video games. It's like what Asmongold says, it's like doesn't do anything for you like there becomes a certain point where it does something for you right if you're like the top predator an apex or if you're on a pro team but unless you're there it's it's fucking useless to be good at video games <laughs> but it, it stood against everything I, I believed in you know in the american dream of making it work you can make it work if you if you put in the effort in Yugambaru or whatever, right? Um, it felt like she was shitting on my dreams. It's, and this kind of just made me go on a spiral of, man, I'm just a piece of shit, aren't I? Um, so after after I graduated, I was working at the only job I could. Uh, I, I I was working as a dishwasher. And then I got a job at uh, the Children's Museum, which was kind of cool. There was other young people working there, believe it or not. I wasn't, I wasn't very good at interacting with the other young people, even though one of the other young people I had a, a crush on, she was this blonde girl. And we would chat after work, sometimes carpool, and we went on a date. I, I think the first kiss I had I, was at a pizza restaurant um, in the same town of where my workplace was she was very opposite of me actually you know free-spirited fun and free-spoken i just couldn't understand her um but that's that's what made her so intriguing 
Um, but sometimes she would say mean things to me. Uh, but I thought she would do it in a play playful way. I don't know. But she would tell me, like, I suck or I'm a loser. But I maybe I don't think it was in a playful way. Maybe she was just a mean person. But um, because I also thought of myself as a loser, I thought it was fine. I, I said sideline star because, you know, I got cut from the basketball team. I got rejected by my prom date. Um, the only thing I was good at was playing video games. Um, but even when I tried to do that competitively, I, I just fell short. Um, and I, I just kind of held on to that identity in the back of my mind. Just... And, and this is... This is where I talk about the firing squad. It's just me shooting shots at myself. And these these guns are always there, these psychological guns in the back of my mind. Um, I've got no money. Everything in my life is breaking. Eczema sucks. My art and music suck. I have nothing. Um, and this is where I told my... Like, I, I struggle with suicidality every now and then. And I don't... Like, reality kind of sucks, like, <laughs> realistically for me. Like, life sucks and continuity is nothing but a pain in the ass. Um, a lot of, a lot of days, like, um, just getting up and, <laughs> just getting up is, is a victory for me. Just getting up out of bed is, because life just feels like a burden most of the days. Like, um, yeah, it, and I, I think this is, is, it was awkward because even my mom was, she was kind of shocked. She was taken aback here about all these mean things I was saying to myself. And she was kind of shocked and she kind of pulled back and tried to pull me back in. And like, well, <laughs> well, you made enough to survive. Focus on, like she was, like I saw it kind of shocked her and um, I, I don't know. If, <laughs> I think it was, I had this similar experience at a bar. So I was drinking at a bar with my cousin, and the bartender is like this, you know, most bartenders are these chatty kind of people that, that ask you to speak up about your life and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, she was like, if you have something that's bothering you, you should say something about it. And then I went on on this like existential crisis and all these things that are bothering me in my place in the universe. And I, I, she just looked at me like a deer in the the headlights because i realize not not everyone thinks about these things on a, a daily basis um so I, I told my mom she has two other successful kids now let me just soak in my failure and um i needed time before i called my mom again um, so yeah that, it's been it's been a rough it's been it was a rough day let's say <laughs> so i I really want to work at a creative field. Um, I want to go to animation school. Yeah, DJing at a large club or festival would be fun, but I, I just, I just don't see it being realistically possible. I've always wanted to drive in a drift event in Japan, but like, <laughs> that that costs money, right? So it's like I don't, I don't, I don't see any of this stuff being possible. Um, I I realize there's some people in life that have this you know, magical creative force or spark. And, and it's just not something I had. It just, it's not something I feel like I have. Like this. It's almost like, I don't know, they have this, this aura about them that I don't have. And um, it's, it's tough trying to cope with that. Then I always, I also swung to this other extreme of, Maybe I should just create to create, not to in an audience or I, I think a lot of things in life start to lose their the essence of why they're even around, right? So even though I'm I have mixed feelings about Max Verstappen and the way he races, like he's very I'm here to race cars and like that that's so pure and and nice because F1 has become this thing where it's like okay F1 we're trying to sell you energy drinks and pizza and things that and Ferraris and things like that and 
all the stuff which is also interesting about the sport kind of takes away from the pure we're just here to race right all the politics and and rules and but if life is a game it, sh it should be fun just to play it right sometimes you play a game of apex legends or league of legends and even though you don't win it's still fun right and um what's the point of playing if you're not having fun jigglypuff players yes i'm i'm a falco man <laughs> Um, I, but at the same time, I've read the book called, you know, Playing to Win, which is a, a good, good book, good esports book if you're looking to get into esports. I, I want some level of success in right, life, right, to help me attain experiences like ra racing, drifting, or learning, right? It's a lot easier to go to school or PewDiePie, you know, PewDiePie has infinite money to just sit around and draw, and he's a pretty great artist now. But shouldn't I just want to draw to draw at the same time? Um, that that stuff's a lot easier to do when you know wealthy. Um, I I talk about Life is Strange in in my blog blog a lot, and I think it's one of my favorite games, um, just game series in general. Um, I I think some of the best moments of Life is Strange actually aren't the actual gameplay. It's just immersing yourself in a world right um and one of the great things about life strange true colors is you get to see everyone's true feelings right that's that's such a powerful ability it's almost super supernatural right to be an empath um and and i think in our online world um it's it's almost ironic that I'm saying this under the guise of a VTuber. Is authenticity authenticity is hard to find because when you post stuff online, it's always, ooh, I'm trying to be positive, rah rah. It's like LinkedInified. Oh, I hate Link LinkedIn so cringe because it's like, oh, even though I got fired today, this is an opportunity. Oh, it's so it's so cringe. Oh, it's so cringe. Um, but I illustrate here that. On my website, you get to see the real thing, the true colors of me, you know, me being sad, upset, angry, and disappointed. And if that human experience is, is you know, beneficial to you or, or you find that entertaining, I don't know. <laughs> but um, there are negative sides to life, right? B being, being sad only makes the happy days happier. I, I know this... This is a little binary, right? Um, or maybe I, I, what's the word? Like the <laughs> like the world needs black and white to be contrast, right? Accepting the negative sides of ourselves helps us to get a full full image, like an old film camera. So there there's a paradox of accepting negative moments, and that that ends up benefiting us. So I like to keep it real, like uh. Dave Chappelle here, but keeping it real can go very wrong, and I, I encourage you to watch that clip on its own, because it's pretty funny. So, on to our next article. Yeah, this is just kind of me talking about my life. It's such a self-centered podcast. I mean, hopefully it's it'll turn more into, you know, it won't just be this. <laughs> well, um, so, I'm almost 30, and, you know, I've been laughing at the memes of 1994 kids turning 30, the big 30, and I, I still don't feel like an adult, uh, but it, maybe it's <laughs> time to time to start acting like an adult. So, I just talk about, as you grow up, um, weekends aren't really weekends, it's just time for you to do work that's not work work, but work that needs to be done things like chores or me um when you live in the city in japan you actually have to rent a separate parking spot if your apartment is a parking spot so i spent my saturday going to a realtor's office and giving my money away i hate giving my money away it's <laughs> um so my mom asked me where my money goes and this is this is probably like two thirds of the month. I still need to update my expenses, but a lot of where my money goes in Japan is rent and 
transportation is actually pretty, but like a lot of taxes and shit. Like, I haven't even put in like, like Japan has this bullshit thing called residence tax. Where you live in an area, you owe us five hundred dollars a month. Because, like, okay, and there's taxes and fees and bureaucracy, and anyone who's lived in Japan can tell you the bureaucracy. Like, I told my mom, I'm not walking around with Jordans. I don't have the newest technology. I don't have nice clothes. I've been wearing the same clothes for a while, so... I don't know where my money goes, so I'm trying to figure it out, too. But I knew where some of my money went, and that's a parking spot in Japan. So, in order to rent a parking spot, you have to pay for two months of rent. One month of rent as key money, which is, hey, that's money that you just give us not for a deposit or anything, it's just, it's like, they call it gift money. So just because the landlord, it, it comes from, like, old feudal Japan. It's kind of dumb that they still have it, actually. It's, it's just money they get for existing and having the privilege to own that spot. It's like here. Then a security deposit, which you get back, but that's, that's also money that has to come out of your pocket. So, yay. And after after dealing with this, I was actually kind of happy because I I was <laughs> I probably looked like a psychopath because I was smiling in the realtor's office, but I was able to understand everything that was going on with my intermediate ish level Japanese. So I was smiling like an idiot. I was like, "Oh my god, I understand this," even though they're using like contractual like a uh, realtor language. I've I've done this enough times where I I know what's happening. Um, but <laughs> after I got home from that. Um, actually switching between language modes is quite exhausting. Um, there's a lot of research that shows um, it's quite mentally taxing to switch That's why they actually, when they have live translation on TV, you'll hear the voices change every 10 to 15 minutes or something like that. Very mentally taxing. So when I got home, I just did the Windows. I just, I just shut down. <laughs> I love those retro windows doors. Uh, I'm old. Anyway, yeah, so I just I went, went home and I slept. Um, and sometimes, you know, all these finance bros and the grind hustle bros would be like, don't sleep. You don't need sleep. You can sleep when you die or blah, blah, blah. Uh, but y you need your sleep. Get your sleep. If life would be a lot easier if it came up with this, you know, little Sims bars. I would be pretty good at because I was pretty damn good at the Sims. I, I will say I optimized the Sims pretty well. I think autistic people are better at the Sims than they are in real life. Very, if you're feeling bad in real life, you don't know why, right? In the Sims, when you're feeling bad, you just look at these bars and be like, "Well, this this guy needs to take a shit and uh, play some video games and take a shower, and we'll feel better." But <laughs> life's not that <laughs> clear cut. <laughs> So I think that's where autistic people struggle. Um, and this is where th this blog kind of went off on like the it, <laughs> it veered off into me talking about slots for for like the, <laughs> a large, it's like life lessons from slots. It's like a cringe article that I just made because I don't know. I have like I said, I was raised Catholic Christian, but I have all these fun spiritual beliefs. One of the fun spiritual beliefs that I got from bro Hinduism that might not be a real Hinduism is sometimes when you when you're ready for the spiritual teacher, the spiritual teacher will walk into your life. And I believe, like, why? I, you know, I'm actually part Native American um, through my dad's side, and they have things like spirit animals and spirit totems, and it's you know it sounds a little cringe and like, but I, I like to believe in it because it makes the world more, a little more fun. Um, so when when I was taking this ESL class, you know, teaching English as a se second language before I came to Japan, sure, um, had a fun activity at the graduation ceremony. I remember my family was there and all the graduates' families were there. Um, but we'd reach into a a bag and grab a small plastic animal. Um, so I reach my hand into the bag and. I feel something that's... I, I don't want to, like, feel around too much because I want it to be, like, you know, resigning myself to fate. So I, the first shape I grab, I was like, huh, this doesn't feel like an animal. It doesn't have four legs. 
Um, I was trying to guess what antelope was before I pulled it out. I was like, it doesn't feel aquatic or, or anything. Um, I was hoping it'd be like something like an owl, because uh, a barn owls look pretty cool, an otter or a dog. Um, but <laughs> I pulled out this sl little sloth hugging a tree, and I was like, oh god, that's why I didn't feel like an uh, like a four legged animal. Uh, like, I don't know, just, you know, the, the slots can actually turn their heads like 180 degrees, so I saw this little thing smiling at me. My mom, like, cracked up laughing, and she was like, oh, how fitting. Um, you know, it is kind of fitting, because I, I was thinking about it, and I, I, I like being warm, I like humid environments, and like, the more I learned about the slot, the more how, like, the more cool I thought they were, I, I guess. Um... And as I write here, it's perhaps it's the universe's way of teaching me my metaphysical makeup. Um, so if, if I was in Harry Potter and I was like, expect a Patronus, bitch, and then a little sloth would come out, you know, slowly. Slowly but surely, he'd make his way out of the wand. Um, <laughs> but but then I went off on this tangent of what, what lessons could a sloth teach me about life? Um, and I think... Sloths have this, like, negative connotation, which is kind of sad. Um, even in English and Japanese, you call it lazy person sloth. Namake uh, mono. It's like a useless lazy person. But um, despite their biblical association with sin, uh, not, not all laziness is a bad thing, right? Um, getting rest when you need to and recharging. Terrible thing to sleep when you're tired despite what society tells you, right? And also, idleness is something that we're having a war on in our modern society, right? How, how often do you just, like, sit without scrolling through TikTok or, or listening to music? Or just doing something, like... Idleness is good for your, for your brain, for, for creativity. Um, they're finding that kids are creative, less creative nowadays because a lot of... You know, a lot of your thinking is, is made up, your imagery is made up for you now. Um, even with my generation, right? Um, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, if you asked uh, a room of kids to draw a lion, they would, they would draw their own version of a lion, whatever they thought it was. But now everyone just draws Simba. And it might have changed since now because Lion King's not very popular. But, you know, kids are getting these iPods at younger ages. And that's not saying that they can't be creative in places like Minecraft. Like, kids come up with some weird stuff in Minecraft and Fortnite. Um, but I, I feel like humans have this need for constant simulation. But you don't need that, right? Sometimes it's good to just unplug. Ride a bike or... For me, I like to just go on drives and think about nothing. Just like... <laughs> just me in the road, just driving. And then you think about all these creative... Sometimes you have creative ba breakthroughs, right? Um, and this is where I talk about Life is Strange again, right? One of my favorite parts of Life is Strange is just living through the lens of someone. It's not the story itself. It's just walking through the high school and thinking, and looking at the, you know, all, all the posters and stuff. Or um, one of the coolest places is Chloe's room, right? Our, our rooms tell us so much, or our, our possessions, our belongings take Oh, so much about, and I think it's so powerful to to live that right through someone else's perspective. Like some of my favorite moments in that game are when you listen to the music, or if you choose to listen to music, it'll just show scenes of their life, just show scenes of the environment while playing that you know this rock that just makes me think of the Pacific Northwest. Maybe it's a little home. Um, so some things we can learn about. Uh, learn, <laughs> learn uh, with sloths is not all laziness is a bad thing. So Microsoft and Google actually hire people with just an ounce of lazy, just a teeny yeah, bit of laziness because they'll find more efficient ways to do things. And actually, one of the reasons I learned automation and why I want to learn programming and coding is because when you learn those tools, it it makes it so tedious tasks are less tedious, right? Because instead of looking through an Excel sheet and manually 
doing data input, you create an automation for it. So you hit a button and sure, there might be a lot of upfront work to creating the automation, you create the automation and now you just sit back and watch your work get done. Um, and that's, I think some of the cool factor in life comes from making hard things look easy. Uh, skateboarders call it steezy, <laughs> but, um, that's what, what I'm kind of trying to build laid back lifestyle to at some point, you know, I'm hoping that all these blogs, you know, all my music or art or whatever that the hell I upload will, will turn into some sort of hopefully, you know, um, passive income for me. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see where it leads. <laughs> and sometimes my, my art and, and music are a form of laziness, believe it or not. Because I'll have some important thing to do, but I'd rather just get lost in my, my art world or lost in my music world <laughs> and uh, complete it. So, um... This is kind of on the same tangent as before, but we always want to get to the end of the road, whether it's our career or I, I think, I think our problem, our generation has a problem with, they call it instant gratification, but, um, it's such a, you know, cheesy stereotypical thing to say is you gotta enjoy the journey, right? Not the destination. Like when you play through a video game, when, when you get to the end of it, talking about you, Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, when you get to the end of it, you're more disappointed because actually playing through the journey of it was the great part, right? It was like when I first got to Diamond and Apex Legends, it was this epic story of, oh shit, okay, this is the last game of the split. You're either getting a diamond or we're not. Um, and there's like this epic game that we won and I got to diamond and when I got it, it was, it wasn't like, I mean, it was great. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as great as, you know, the, the friendships I built along the way and all the games we played and all the fun stories we have at our, of our failures and our successes. Um, and I, I think a lot of millennials and G Zen Z's struggle with the, this, trying to speed run through life, you know, ever feeling like you've arrived yet. And, and what people tell me all the time is, Hey, you're living in Japan. That's, that's a big deal. Um, I don't, I don't find it. That is a big deal, but I just need to slow down and enjoy, enjoy life here. You know, stop saying, you know, that's a big, big vocal tick I have. Trying to get rid of my vocal tics because you know, now that I'm a public speaker, taking the time to enjoy small pleasures in life, like smelling coffee, music, or just enjoying the sights you see every day and you might take for granted. This is where I get into my, my Christian upbringing here. There's a story in the Bible of, you know, a blind man skills falling from his eyes and he can finally see again and that's that's what kind of realizing the the amazingness of life is when you slow down breathe the air in um so i think slots are persistent right if they want to get somewhere i think there's a lot of videos of sl slots crossing the road. They're actually pretty good swimmers, but if they want to get from point A to p point B, they're not going to do it right away. <laughs> it's going to take them some, some time to arrive at that destination, but I think it's good to be persistent, right? I think getting better at art and, and music mixing is, it's a long journey getting better at these things. So I'm just going to slowly try to get better at it, right? No rush. So slots are amazingly efficient. Um, so um, the, the way that their tendons and things are designed is it's more, they burn less energy hanging. And that's why they hang out. <laughs> so um, they're, they're efficient with their metabolism and their resourcefulness because 
they're resourceful because what they're eating actually doesn't have much um, nutritional value. And the way I took that into my, my thinking is if I can be resourceful, right? If I can turn, if I can turn, make something out of nothing, that's a good lesson to take from slots. I've, I've kind of equated this to working with my limitations, right? Like if you see your limitations as a limiting factor, it will be a limiting factor. Uh, whereas some people like, I think I've talked about this before, Martha Stewart, she was in prison and then she made a new cooking book out of a microwave because that's all she had to work with. You can turn your limitations into a strength, right? Um, and for me, that means working with a limited time or budget as a creator, uh, working with um, equipment <laughs> constraints or, you know, I have no money and just learning how to work with no money or um, learning how to make money is it's a valuable skill to have and it's a valuable knowledge to share with the world. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so one thing that about slots is they actually sleep for about the same amount of time as humans. Um, they only sleep more in captivity. So sleep, they sleep at any time. Like some are, they call them dineural. They sleep at the daytime. They sleep at nighttime. Whenever they feel like they need to sleep, they sleep. And it, for me, it goes with that Buddhist thinking of if you're tired, sleep. And then if you're hungry, eat. I love that beautiful Zen idea of that. So, uh, <laughs> the la the last thing is um, smile more. You know, I, oh, fuck, I keep saying you you know. <laughs> I need to. That's a vocal tick. Um, but spots are known for their their innocent looking smile, and maybe they're not smiling, having a good time, but. Sometimes smiling can <laughs> make hard things easier. Like when something out of your control happens, like your bus is late, it's like shit happens. Uh, we'll work better next time. And <laughs> I think my favorite word in Japanese is shogunai. It's like, oh, well, we can't, nothing can be done about it, so might as well just do it this way. Yeah, I love that world. Um,. So, although a lot of cheesy influencers say to chase your dreams, they might be right. <laughs> and I, I hate cheesy influencers. Ugh. Um, but most of my, my, my dream chasing has ended in disaster. You know, Japan has kind of been more of a nightmare than a dream. Don't move here. Just visit. Um, <laughs> but one of the things I want to do in my, my lifetime is to volunteer and help the slots. I don't know when I'll get to do that, but don't go to those slot selfie places are actually quite bad, but actually volunteer at a animal rescue place. And I have allergies to animals, so it might be a little problem, but you know, I'll pack some allergy pills and it'll only be for a week, so hopefully it'll be okay. So after that, that weird foray about slots, we have some of the stuff stuffs I've done. That's what I actually look like, I know. <laughs> so I'm working with something they call Office 365 Automation and uh, SharePoint. This is just business automation and you can create some fun platforms and tools. So I'm working free. I actually work two jobs. Um, even though my mom tells me I don't do enough, I'm working two jobs. One as a SharePoint and automation consultant doing work for an intern. And my tour guide, and it's, it's been very tough uh, working two jobs. Something that not only I do, I know a lot of millennials and Gen Zs feel like they don't make enough money just doing one job. And I think that's, that's just a modern society problem. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about it. But yeah, everyone has, <laughs> I feel like I'm always working. I have my 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 first job, my second job, and then my, you know, this laid back lifestyle thing, which is like three or four jobs, because <laughs> you, you know, have to do everything when you have no budget. But yeah, I, I pulled off a successful launch at one school up for a platform I was building, and I'm just kind of celebrating that. It's one of those things where I need to take a computer science course. Uh, the Harvard one is free.
And as you know, some of you might know I'm an artist. And I kind of want to make my own VTuber model now. Not that I, I'm kind of a VTuber, but... I, I carry around my sketchbook wherever, and I was finally able to do some art. I'm trying to make an original character by music, which I call DT DJ Ninetales, which I've... I'm changing the branding to say DJ IX, because I... And there's another DJ on Ninetales, or there's another Ninetales that goes by Ninetales with an S who makes music, so myself from even though I love his music, his music is pretty great. But this is just kind of talking about the idea behind DJ Nine Tails and what it is. Um, you can read more about that, but the, essentially the idea is build up a character which will act as a label, and that way when I you know get too old for if, if this ever takes off, probably, probably won't. But if it ever takes off, if I ever get too old and I feel like I don't want to be in a nightclub anymore, I can pass this this character or mask on to another DJ and they can continue making it a thing. So that was my original design. I didn't really like it. I'm not sticking with it. But you can see it going final sketches and coloring takes a lot of process. It goes through the line art. And I'm not very confident with color, so I just colors from Blue Archive. I really love their character designs. I don't even play the game. And I, I try, I'm trying to get... To, I'm trying to... The background's so bad. Ah! <laughs> I'm trying to draw backgrounds now. But it's pretty lackluster. And when, when I finish images, I need to create a checklist. Uh, I'm in the process of doing that. But... It could be optimized. So I've actually been struggling with art motivation, and a lot of that comes down to AI art, especially with um, a lot of influencers, especially one JDM influencer that uh, I, you know, I'd love to throw shade at right now, but uh, you know, <laughs> I don't care enough to. But um, AI art is, I, I think it's. I don't know. I feel like it's a problem. Maybe it can be a tool. I, I, I'm not... Part, part of me who's an artist doesn't like it. Um, another part of me that sees the utility of it, it's like, I can see the utility of it, but because it steals from the the work in the library of artists who training their tools, or training their, their skills for a while, I, I just don't... I just don't like it. I don't know. I don't like AI art. It bothers me. Um... So I haven't been motive like the 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 lack of creative motivation I've felt comes from a variety of things. First of all, when I first started art, just drawing every day would make me better because just the act of repetition of drawing when you're starting out makes you much better. But I lost part of my motivation due to AI and. I, th I thought, what's the point of getting better at art? All but with an AI prompt. AI prompts are are getting kind of ridiculous. Like they they create such great looking images with such little eff effort. Um, and some big game studios are using AI art assets already. I think the Apex Legends got caught, and originally they didn't know that it was. AI art sample, but I, I think this is just the start of what we'll we'll see in the industry, and I I don't have a great optimism for it. So a lot of big companies are cutting art roles and writer roles because they they figured, hey, if we have this AI tool, why don't we use it? And then this game called Pow World comes out, which it kind of has a shady like people don't know if the character designs are just AI rips of Pokemon characters. It just felt scummy to me, and with its success, then I, I just don't know how I feel about that. But but then I realized that AI image generation takes the best part of being a creative out of the equation, is just living in another world and, and asking yourself interesting questions or 
are, are more fun than just typing it into a prompt, I guess. And, and I'm sure the, that real artists will come up with a way to use AI, but, and then there's the argument that real artists take inspiration from other things like AI, but I think it's different at its core. And I, I think sometimes I, I do use AI and I, I want to get away from using it just because I think it'd be more fun to learn how to use 2D and 3D. And I said, I want to learn the art fundamentals again because those are the most important things to about art. So I want to get back to learning the fundamentals. So I have a lot of music in the works. Some of it's half complete. Some of it I just need to do the visualizer for. I, I need to start making DJ mixes again on the weekend if I want to DJ. <laughs> you know, you got to put, actually have to DJ if you want to DJ. But yeah, being a D bedroom DJ, you can only get so far. You know, I'd like to explore maybe DJing in VR spaces and VR DJing. Right now it's not feasible so as a gamer it's weird to grow up with a medium i've been gaming since i was you know five um to go from something like the nes and you know the sega genesis to modern day consoles and pc gaming quite a transformation i think in technology and I don't want to sound like a grandpa, but I remember when you bought a game, it was it was complete. None of this, I buy Call of Duty for $70, and then there's all this stuff I don't own that they're trying to sell me more shit. But um, I, I decided to re replay Mass Effect. Um, and it's interesting to go back to a game that's almost 20 years old um, and having a more refined palette. I think as a gamer, because you have all these diverse experiences. And I found that some aspects of this game age really well, just the talking and interacting and living in a world. Well, other, other parts of it, like the shooting, um, now, that I, now that I know a little more, more about RPGs and min-maxing, it didn't age too, too well. Um, but I think it's funny that playing Mass Effect is retro gaming, and on my laid-back gaming channel, I plan to make a Mass Effect video. Or, or do a write up. I'll probably do a write up and a scripted video for that because I'm trying to experiment with scripting video. This is just kind of my podcast. So, so I think one of one of the things that's interesting about being a, an adult in gaming and being interested in more than just the dopamine rush of completing objectives in a game is because I want to be a game developer. Knowing about the the things that inspired Mass Effect are also interesting to me, and I think, um, as, as an adult, I'm, I'm getting more interested in the Star Trek series um, because I think as a kid, Star Wars is easier to latch onto because it's essentially a, a fantasy story with laser swords and and you know guns and explosions, but they don't, well, at least the original trilogy and you know the newer. The Star Trek main trilogy films don't really address the interesting questions of sci-fi, right? What do I mean by interesting questions? AI is gaining sentient. I think it's interesting because the the original reason Star Trek had to ask these questions and, and address them this way is because Star Trek doesn't have a big budget. It's a TV show. It's not a movie. So a lot of their special effects and things were, you know, of a limited budget. So instead they had to ask interesting questions of being a space exploring human in, in the future. So that means what if our AI ship starts to gain sentience, right? What is, what is the moral implications of destroying a hive mind or, or things, <laughs> things of that nature, asking those questions about sci-fi. And I think that's what Ma Mass Effect leans more towards is asking these interesting questions of how these future races um, co-inhabit space and, and how trade works. And 
<laughs> I think one of the most interesting parts about Mass Effect is just sitting and listening to the codex. You can just uh, like when I when I turned on the the game for the first time and I heard that soundtrack, it, it just took me back to being a kid and being able to disassociate with reality. Right, I'm a big fan of that. Hence the VTuber body <laughs> and um, living in that another world. And and to me, I have this weird weird idea of imaginary. So I, to me, I think it's also a real space. Um, you know, it's a real space that we peer into. I, I think it's, it's almost like the imagination land of Starbucks or Starbucks <laughs> imagination land of um, South Park, where I, I believe these are real spaces in our multidimensional. We have a multidimensional sort of telescope into them. Right. Um, anyway. I think it'd be interesting if they made a, a game like Mass Effect where your decisions actually mattered. Um, like for me, I wouldn't really care about the graphics. Like I think Baldur's Gate is a good example. You can accomplish one quest in like 12 or 15 different ways. Um, something like that where it's like, I don't care if the graphics are good. As long as the, the gameplay is at least Mass Effect 2 level. Um, as long as you can actually have these branching stories that do. So outside of playing Apex Legends and, you know, grinding for masters, I, I recently played Call of Duty again. Um, and coming, coming back to COD after years being away from it is, is an interesting experience. Like I said, having a different, different palette as a gamer, um, to be able to, to play COD again is weird. I'm still pretty decent at the multiplayer parts, um, but that's not what matters to me um, when I play COD. It's just a casual experience when I jump on my with my friends. And one of the most fun moments I've had in gaming actually are the raids. So it came out of nowhere. My friends and I were just like, you know, we played Warzone, we played Zombies, we were looking for something new to do. And Modern Warfare 2 had these raids. So the, these three-man raids where there's all sorts of fun mechanics. And some of the most fun I've had uh, in COD recently is doing these raids and doing the puzzles. And I found it funny that <laughs> we were in a Call of Duty game and the most fun part wasn't the shooting at all. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows with COD. I have plenty of issues with it. Um, but the shooting still does feel good. Uh, what brought me back to COD actually was the 2019 mission. Um, I think it's like a safe house mission where it's in London and you're assaulting a safe house. It's a really immersive mission. And one of the, and maybe I'll come up with a COD review or a COD based video on my gaming channel. But and one of the issues I had with the, the raid was I felt like it wasn't realistic enough or it didn't lean into the class based system enough. So it was kind of like wishy washy on that. So, and there's only like four of them. There should be more. They So I said running towards a brighter future. One of the things I want to do is exercise more. And I, I, I haven't been great about it, um, but I've been exercising more. Even if it's at like 2 in the morning, I go for a run. Um, for my health, um, for my <laughs> it's, you know, as much as I love being a gamer, I don't like to be an unhealthy gamer, you know. Healthy gamer GG, shout out to, uh, to him. But um, I think it's good for not only my mental capability growing up, but if I ever get into a drift or race car, I don't want my, my health or mental sharpness being a limit, limiting factor for me, right? I, like, I doubt I'll ever be in any form of serious racing, but if I am, it won't be my body holding me back. So. I use the Nike Run app. You know, this is a... <laughs> I think using apps is nice because it's like having a coach, but not having to pay for one. It is kind of cheesy when they're like, good work, you're doing great. <laughs> but it does help you get off your ass and start. And sometimes the, the hardest thing about going on a run is just starting it. I find it's pretty enjoyable once you start running. Um, yeah, so one of the things about just starting is just trying to walk towards your dreams. I'm kind of doing...
I'll tell you how it turns out. For me, it hasn't turned out great, but you know, you never know until you try. See, see, it's been a busy, it's a been a busy two weeks. I just haven't made a podcast or vlog about it. Um, tomorrow, I'm actually going to an Apex Legends event in Tokyo, and I, I plan to make a vlog of that. So hopefully, you guys will enjoy that. But I, I started a new job. I had my training last week. Um, so just just come goes over like the process of training. I, and I think it's funny that I am a tour guide of Japan uh, just because I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little socially awkward. But I'm, there are some things that I'm good at doing that might help in this job, actually. So this just talks about the, the story of the company, um, which is pretty inspiring. The, the founder was working in finance. Um, she saw this chart about um, a lot of the Japanese prefectures, despite all their super tax money, <laughs> will be bankrupt by the year 2040 or something or 2030, because a lot of the revenue goes to big prefectures like Tokyo and Kanagawa, one of the prefectures I'm in, so they're not poor. <laughs> they're making money. Um, but it's, it's a lot of the rural areas of Japan are seeing a lot of people flee them in order to find work or you know, the population's aging and Japan isn't producing a lot of kids, so the population's dropping. Um, so a lot of these areas are, are losing money. Um, but she thought that was sad and she wanted to do something about it, so she made a travel company. It wasn't going so well at first, just like my dream isn't going so well, but I caught on into it so, so hard. Um, so it wasn't going too well at first, but uh, found a way to make it successful. And now in the, the recent two years, it, it's really successful. And she has to hire more tour leaders. And that's where I come in because I'm a tour leader. So this just covers like what it's like to be a, t a tour leader. And on my first couple of days of work, I couldn't believe I was getting paid to do them because I was just traveling around Tokyo. <laughs> Tokyo and Hakone and, and things that I would find interesting to do and getting paid for. And I, it's one of those things where, oh God, I thought I knew a lot about Japan, but now that I'm a tour leader and I'm going to have to talk about all these places, I feel like I need to, to study more. And I'm actually quite good at studying things I'm interested in, like, like Japan. So I thought maybe even using my website as a place for things I know about Tokyo, things I know about Yokohama, start doing, you know, restaurant reviews or videos about places and, and maybe turn my website into like a information about Japan hub, I guess. <clears throat> and that's what I actually look like. Unfortunately, I don't look like that cute thing on the screen or <laughs> the cute cutout I'm standing next to. Um, but, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, you got to have fun. So this is in Shinjuku Tower. Um, this is just highlights some of the stuff I do around Tokyo with, with my training group. Uh, I went to Hokone, pirate ship, I saw Mount Fuji. And my office is actually in central Tokyo. So now I know the experience of getting on an overly crowded train during rush hour. It's not something I recommend. It's not a fun experience, but you, you got to do what you got to do sometimes to get home. Yeah, so I just got to go around Japan, and then we had a a company party, a new a New Year's party for. And then I'm I'm terrible at these situations, these social situations. So I kind of struggled through that, but I ended up singing karaoke, and 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 that's my week. Yeah, I just. Starting my t first tour on Sunday, so yeah, I'm a tour leader now in Japan, so you might see less videos or maybe videos in obscure locations, but I hope to learn more about Japan in this coming year and share that with you. It's been quite a lengthy podcast episode, but I hope, hope it's been helpful for some of you or if you're interested in Japan or um, my life or... No, just dream, dream chasing in general because I, I know. So um, <laughs> I got it's 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 weird seeing this character in the corner and like the thing is like 
I'm afraid to step out of myself even being being behind the lens of this kid. You should be able to like, you know, just have fun. That's what VTubing's all about, having fun. Right. Anyway. This is this has been real. Um continue, you know, chasing your dreams and living that laid back life. Uh, I will catch you on the next episode.